We've covered animating constraints for views that are set up in Interface Builder. What about views you create dynamically? If you're creating views in code, you're probably creating constraints for them at the same time. Instead of creating outlets for those constraints, you would store the constraints as you create them and then animate them in the same way you've already learned. In this episode, we'll create a new view to preview a bigger image of each item in your list when you tap on it. That will require you to, one, create all the constraints to position and size the preview, and two, create animations to show and hide the preview when an item is tapped. To start, hit Shift-Command-O and jump to the show item method. Show item is already set to be what gets triggered when the user taps on a table row. Right now, it just adds an image subview. You can tap on an item yourself and see the preview show up in the top left corner, which is because there aren't any constraints to position it elsewhere. It's time to fix that. We're going to create a set of constraints that will define the view's start value in the animation. The animation we're after will start with a smaller image near the bottom of the screen. Then the image will scale up and move upward on screen at the same time. Let's define a bottom constraint constant. To create a constraint in code, you can use layout anchors. We'll want to get the image view's bottom anchor, and then make a constraint between it and the bottom anchor of the view controller view. That will anchor the image view to the bottom of the view controller. But let's leave a little bit of margin and offset the image position by its own height to keep it off the bottom of the screen. To make it active, you'll need to call nslayoutconstraint.activate. That only accepts an array, so make an array with square brackets and put bottom constraint in it. You'll need three more constraints to satisfy auto layout. One for center x. That will center the image view in the view controller's view. Next, constrain its width using a multiplier and a constant. And let's store that in another constant because we'll be animating it. Make the image view a third of the view controller's width, minus 50 points. Don't forget to add that constraint to what's getting activated. Finally, add a constraint to keep the image view's square aspect ratio. Build and run to see your new constraints at work. This positioning looks awkward, but it's just the starting position for the animation. To create its end state, let's invoke UIView.Animate again, choosing the simplest overload with only a duration of 0.8 and animations. Now let's animate the two constraint constants. First, reposition the preview vertically by changing the bottom constraint. Then reset the constant of the width constraint to zero. That'll make the image scale up a little. Finally, add a call to layout if needed. Build and run to see what happens. But 
the animation is starting from the upper left as if the constraints we made are being ignored. Don't panic though, it's because we never called layout if needed to update the layout after adding the constraints. Add it just before the animation code. This will force auto layout to update so that the preview is in the correct starting position before the animation begins. Run the app one more time, and that's it. That's the animation we wanted. But the previews just keep stacking up and never go away. You've discovered your next challenge.